Okay, guys, um, this time we will take uh, uh, Beta FPV Super DRX uh, for Express LRS with uh, True University, and I got the TC, uh, TCXO version here, uh, the so called Super D, and um, you can see it's redundant and True University twice the components on it, and not only antenna diversity but complete diversity with the. Um, frequency control called TCXO. I will solder that up as usual. Um, this time uh, um, there is such a Japon pin here and two antennas of course and uh, shrink tubing and I will apply all of it and then we will try to flash it. Hang on! You gotta say yes to express LRS. Hey, I've hooked up uh, the Super D with my ESC of choice and we'll just uh, Plug some power to it, so we can flash it. Um, as usual, when I do such things, the one arm and band it, it has to fiddle in the XT60. And I hope we are succeeding. So, um, this first boot up, and you can see um, it will flash and wait for something to connect. Out of uh, um, Curiosity, I did so before and figured uh, you couldn't flash it before version 3.1. Um, today is the day we, really, we, we have got the 3.1.1 of Express LRS. So, yeah, we can build so. You did see that a second ago. So, nothing special to see here about it. It will take a hell lot of time to get this into AP mode, uh, approximately 60 seconds. And then it should stop flashing and where it go over to be something constant. And that's the point where it opens up for uh, the Express LRS wireless network as usual. And you can proceed as usual. Installed on this, here we go with the access point. Yes. Um, installed on this is Express LRS 3.0 in such a special flavor that Beta FPV has built in some way. And uh, we will install this now, the own version 3.1.1, the official one, onto this thing. This is a configurator. I guess you know that one by now. I really will be picking Betaflight FPV and my uh, gear is a Super D and check my settings, which I won't reveal, but um, keeping my auto Wi-Fi on interval to 20 seconds instead of 60 and... Uh, yeah, just that it builds. And because this will take some time, um, I'll tell you something about why I push build instead of build and flash. Um, build will build you the uh, uh, build you the firmware you need. And if it fails because you hit flash two at the same time, you'll have to rebuild it. That's annoying. So I usually take the build and flash it via Wi-Fi afterwards. That's easy to see. It's a file here. It's done. It's good. Now we head over to connect the Wi-Fi of the new receiver. Here we can see it's 3.0 and uh, everything's going cool. But uh, what we want to do is just to update. And we head over to the firmware update tab and take the Super D firmware. Just I used to just pull it over like that and press update. It will take some seconds, and I don't know what happens now. Usually, it's coming up with a mismatch, and so it does here. You can see, it's the <laughs> current model is uh, target is Happy Model EP Dual, and we have this body. And I can assure you, that's the right one. We just hit flash anyway, and it should do. Didn't complain, and it's uh, waiting to reboot. There we go. It should open up in the configurator here in a second. Like now you can see, there we have it. 3.1.1 Super D, 2.4, everything's good. Yes, it succeeded. So that's all there is to it. It will show up as an uh, EP1 dual from Happy Model because that was actually the first one which offer dual uh, diversity, real diversity, not only antenna diversity. And I can show you 
this one was a good one. So the beta FPV is supposed to be a little bit better with the TX, uh, TCXO oscillator to counter the, uh, uh, the frequency drift. And uh, for now, it's up to us to figure out how good this little thing really is. I wish you all the best. Thanks for watching and thanks for joining me this time. We'll be seeing you next time. Bye bye. And we'll be seeing you. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. That would be awesome. That would be awesome.